So I have found that meal prepping is the number one way that I can cut down on time in the kitchen. I do enjoy cooking, but it doesn't mean I want to spend all my time in the kitchen doing lots of mundane tasks, getting all kinds of dishes out, and making a mess just like three times a day. So I have found what works for me the most is to do a big giant batch meal prepping session and get all the dirty dishes made at once, get all the chopping, cutting, dicing, prepping done, so that when it is time to cook, you just literally whip out your ingredients, assemble, bake, whatever, and you are on your way. My name is Megan Fox, and I'm a mom of a toddler or a preschooler, I'm not sure, a one and a three year old, and I have made an entire video about how I meal plan, shop, and prep, and all that kind of stuff, so I think you guys will find that one super helpful. But if you'd like to zero in on the whole prepping step, that is what today's video is all about. And maybe you are a seasoned cook and you're all aboard the meal prepping train. Welcome, let's do this together today. But if you are new, let me tell you why you should start meal prepping. My favorite thing about meal prepping is that it falls under that whole productivity tip of batching like tasks together. And it just makes sense. You're getting your knives out, your dishes dirty, your sinks messy. Um, why not just do it all at once? So today I'm going to be prepping some breakfast items and some lunch items. I'm not going to really be doing much with supper because this week we are doing Green Chef meals. And I can show you a little bit what those meals look like a little bit later in case you like want to see what Green Chef has to offer. But most of the things I'm going to do today are just centered around breakfast and lunch. We do it a little bit differently, which I did address in a past video. I have only two kids and my husband works away from home. So we tend to just eat the same thing for breakfast and the same thing for lunch all week long. And that really cuts down a lot on all that extra prep work and cooking. Um, I know that might sound crazy, who wants to eat the same thing for five days in a row, six days in a row, whatever. But if you select the right menu, you will find out here in just a sec how it can be super versatile and you can kind of tweak it up a little bit so it's not the same mundane thing every single day. So if you're excited to spend some time in the kitchen with me today, hit that like button and let's get into it. So there are a few things that are gonna make meal prepping easier for you. One is to have a plan. You don't just wanna wander aimlessly around your kitchen finding items and try to figure out what to do with them. It all starts with a meal plan and then you go shopping and then you prep your food. So don't skip that crucial step. Here's my meal planning for this week and you guys can download this PDF on my website. I will link that down below. Um, yeah, it'll just make things super handy for you, but you can just use a scrap piece of paper or whatever just so you kind of have some goals in mind and you know what you're planning to serve your family in the week. And I'd like to point out also that this works great for big families, for small families. I used to think that since I only had two kids, I don't need to worry about all those productivity tips and stuff. But honestly, no matter what stage of life you're in, you want to spend your time doing the things that you love and Spending countless hours washing dishes and tidying up your kitchen is not high on my priority list and probably not yours either. So I definitely recommend this even if you're just starting out you and your spouse or you have 12 kids, whatever. So another thing that I find super helpful is um, some cutting boards. I like to have a couple. I used to only have like one cutting board at a time and it was just a lot of washing and stuff like that. So I will link these down below. And then also you want to get a bunch of containers to put your prepped ingredients into. These I got from Costco a couple years ago. I will link um, some similar ones down below that I found on Amazon. I find them to be super handy. The lids work really well and it's glass so you're not going to have like stuff leaching into your dishes over time. So yeah, I definitely recommend that as well. So the first thing I'm going to make is this fruit leather which turned into like a two-day process. Not because it's a hard process or anything at all. It's just that I needed my oven in the middle of the whole thing and so I ended up dehydrating it the rest of the way the next day. But for this, it's super, super simple. You just go ahead and take a jar of applesauce. You can get bought applesauce. I have this really good homemade applesauce that my mom-in-law canned for me. So I'm just pouring it out onto a piece of parchment paper and then spreading it out nice and, well, kind of smoothly. I was trying to make it smooth, but whatever, you do your best. Um, it kind of flattens out over time, but the more evenly you can make it, the better. That way it all dehydrates at the same speed. And then it really is that simple. You just pop it in the oven at 170 degrees and just let it in there for, it's pretty much an all day process, six, eight hours. It really does depend on how thick you spread it. So I'm not gonna give you a specific concrete time. I'd start checking it after like four hours, six hours. You can kind of tell. I probably should have checked it maybe an hour earlier because it was a little bit brittle. Um, as you get it out of the oven, it gets even like more hard. So get it out when it's definitely like gummy yet, but not sticky. And then what you wanna do is just get a scissors and cut the whole thing. The applesauce, fruit leather, and the paper, just cut it all in strips. And then 
roll it up kind of like sushi or something. <laughs> it's fun. The kids like to eat it like this and it looks cool too. Unfortunately, the applesauce does not keep its pretty pink color, but that's just what happens when you dry fruit. Um, and yeah, then you can just store it in the fridge or I think you can store it actually on your pantry shelf too. It's fine. Um, but I usually just keep it in the fridge. And this is a great thing to throw in lunches or just to serve as like an after nap snack if you guys are in that stage of life. So after I had my fruit leather in the oven, I got my stovetop things together and because I knew that that would take, you know, some time. So I first just wanted to kind of, is it called blanching your peas? I don't know. I just wanted to bring them to a boil quick and then turn it off again just to cook them and then just chill them and use them for salad toppings. Same with hard boiled eggs, which is why I put about uh, eight eggs in a kettle and I brought them to a boil as well and then when it came to a boil I just turned the burner off and set my timer for 20 minutes and you'll see the process of these eggs happening all throughout my prepping time because yeah it takes a couple steps so my plan for the week was to have omelets for breakfast and toast so Josh's grandma and grandpa were so generous and gave us a homemade loaf of bread and I went ahead and just sliced that up it seems like a really random little step but seriously it's tiny little things like that that end up being a barrier to you eating the stuff that's in your fridge and then food going bad so I sliced up the bread and put it back in the bag so that it's just ready to go when we want to toast it in the toaster there is nothing like homemade bread toasted it's just the best Okay, before I move on to some more meal prep, I did say that I'm not gonna be doing any like supper prepping at all because we are doing Green Chef this week. Yeah, it's super easy, so I don't have to really get hardly anything together for suppers because everything comes pre-packaged and ready to go in the bags from Green Chef. So I do wanna talk about them a little bit because they are sponsoring this video and yeah, we are just really, really enjoying them. I had had HelloFresh before and Green Chef is owned by HelloFresh, so they're kind of the same thing. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company. They have dishes for a variety of lifestyles, including vegan, vegetarian, paleo, keto. Yeah, you guys are all going to find something that you love from Green Chef. The last meals we had from them, we loved. I just love how everything comes pre-packaged. There's hardly any mess involved because everything is pretty much prepped and ready to go. You just have to do some dicing and things like that. And the best part is that you get to experience new flavors. Here, let me check. See, they come with recipe cards like this, and the one, um, the apricot glazed pork meatballs that we had came with harissa spiced, am I even saying that right? Came with harissa spiced apricot sauce and smoky applewood spice blend, and so that's like something that I'm not going to have on hand, all those different flavors to like mix together and make like that. It was, it was so good, guys. Everybody loved it. We were all like fighting over the rest of the meatballs. The couscous was out of this world. Um, yeah, we tried a bunch of their recipes already and they were just super flavorful. They come right to your door. You just unpackage it, throw it in your fridge, and then when it's a meal time, you just pull out the bags and we did the um, four person meal plan. So there was two bags per meal. And yeah, we just pull them out of the fridge and you just get going, prepare your food and the cleanup is super easy because most of it, like I said, the, most of the work is done for you already. So we have really been loving Green Chef. So right now for $90 off across your first five Green Chef boxes, just go to greenchef.us slash meganfox90 and enter the code meganfox90 and you guys can try it out for yourself. But I still have to cook our breakfasts and lunches, so I'm going to take a note from Green Chef's book and get prepping all done for that for the rest of this week. Okay, so back to the food prep again. And the peas were done, so I just grabbed them and drained them off and then put them in a dish to cool a little bit before I popped them in the fridge. And we had those all week on top of our salads. And you're gonna see me here making all kinds of toppings for our omelets for the week. And so if you know me, you know that I love avocado toast. And so I was inspired when I was at Slate Cafe in Lidditz. I got their avocado toast and on it, they had sweet honey sriracha sauce on the avocado toast drizzled all over it. It was so pretty, so good. Um, I just love like the sweet and the heat. And so I wanted to try to make it myself. I had no idea how it was gonna turn out. Yeah, I just found a random recipe online and I kind of tweaked it because I knew I wouldn't want that much spice. And I also didn't want it super mayo-y. I think the original version called for a ton of mayo. So here I am just using a fourth of a cup sriracha, which I got at Target, and a fourth of a cup honey. And then I did half a cup of mayo. Um, so that's pretty much what I did. Whisk it up. And then you will see this appear later on. 
and to cover the sweet sriracha sauce or whatever you want to call it, I am getting really into using these like beeswax wraps and so I just use that to cover up the bowl. I maybe will do a video about this in the future, how I like to use them. Um, yeah, they are really cool and super helpful. So when it came time to make breakfast using this sweet sriracha sauce, I basically just took my eggs and whisked in my seasoning blend that I referred to in so many other videos, but I will link it again down below. It just includes some basic ingredients that I'm sure you have in your pantry. And then I just put in a splash of milk and whisk it all up, throw it in the pan, and turn it into an omelet by taking all my prepared toppings and just throwing them in. And then what I did to make it a less carby, like, avocado toast feel to it, I took some avocados and sliced them thinly, laid them on top, and then I drizzled the sweet sriracha over top. And I meant to add the feta cheese to it as well, and I totally forgot. And also, I sprinkled it with everything but the bagel seasoning. So it's pretty much all the flavors of avocado toast, but without the toast. But you could easily add the toast as well if you wanted to. And this was really good, really, really good. You don't need a lot of the sauce. Well, I guess you do, depending how much you like the heat, but this was a real win and a super colorful way to start out my morning. And I just like to tidy up as I go, so here I am just putting some things away, getting more things out. It's completely inevitable that you're gonna make a mess when you are doing meal prepping. That's the whole reason that I like to batch everything together. But I do like to clean up as I go a little bit here and there, so it's just not a horrendous like tornado at the end. And obviously there was crumbs on the counter and I didn't wanna get that on the next food that I was preparing. I diced up a bunch of ham, and I like to buy the already sliced ham from, this was from the deli at Aldi, and I like to have it already sliced and then I slice it up even more so it's really tiny little diced pieces. It's a super easy way to get finely diced ham. And we're gonna use this on our omelets and on our salad bar so it's really nice to have that handy and ready to go. And I'm a little weird, I know. You can easily just buy shredded cheese at the store but it has like sawdust in it is what I call it. It's like a declumping agent, I don't know. It just doesn't make your cheese melt as nicely. It doesn't taste quite as good. Trust me, if you ever had freshly shredded cheese next to bought shredded cheese, they do not taste the same. And so I like to buy cheese and grate it up when I find a good sale. These cheese blocks were $1.47 at all. Oops, <laughs> there we go. Like I said, they were $1.47 at Aldi and I, we love cheddar. And so I just got a couple different versions of that. And so I'm just cubing some up for fresh eating with like pretzels and honey mustard and then the rest I'm going to grate. And could you guys do me a favor? Go ahead and hit that like button if this video is inspiring to you and you like productivity type mom related videos. I feel like there's so many productivity channels out there, but sometimes they're not like showing the super nitty gritty, like how to actually apply those like pie in the sky ideas. And so, yeah, I would love to make more videos like this for you guys if it's something that you want. And then carrots as well. I know a lot of people get whole carrots, peel them and then dice them up. But I like to just buy the baby carrots. I know they're a little more expensive, but I feel like they're more versatile. One, you can just snack on them right like they are. Or you can take the baby carrots and shred them up for salad toppings or soups or whatever. Or you can just do what I'm doing here and dicing them in little rounds. I love how this gives like a different texture to salads and soups and things like that when it's just like these little tiny hockey pucks in your food. It's just like a different shape in your food and a little more interesting and not hard to achieve at all. And then I'm just dicing up some fresh broccoli and cauliflower as well. You guys might be wondering how in the world does she get her one and three year old to eat salads? And I'm gonna tell you, and here they are. You ready? Grab a pen. Let's write this down. One, you buy crispy lettuce. So romaine is really good for this because it's nice and crunchy and easier for them to chew. Whereas like the floppy lettuce is just, yeah, it's too floppy and hard to chew for especially a little guy like Fletcher. And then number two, 
The lettuce is not going to be the star of the show. It's the toppings. You want lots and lots of toppings on salads for little kids. So I'm dicing up this cauliflower and broccoli really finely. Same with the carrots and all the other toppings you're seeing here. And when I assemble their salad, it's barely any lettuce and lots of toppings. So that way it's easy for them to, you know, pick up and eat when they're very small and just using their fingers. And they can also get it with a fork. They don't have to worry about all that leafy lettuce. And yeah, they don't mind eating it at all. Also, my next tip, three, use Italian dressing. My kids eat that stuff on everything and it's just perfect for salads. It gives some seasoning and some flavor. I don't know, maybe this won't work for your kids, but I'm just telling you how I get my kids to eat salad. And then the next tip is to make sure you serve the salad in a bowl so that they can easily like use their fork to stab it and slide it up the side to get it to their mouth. And also my last tip is I would encourage you to start this at a young age. Kids kind of get a weird idea in their head and then you can't get it out. They think like they can't eat salads and then you can't hardly get them to start trying. My friend, I was super inspired. I was at the cabin. I think I was pregnant with my first one. I didn't have any kids yet. And her two-year-old was sitting there at the cabin eating salad like a champ. And I was like, wow, I want to see if my kids will eat salad. So I did try it and lo and behold, they like it. Um, so here I am just cleaning up again. Um, yes, your floor will get messy when you're meal prepping. That's just the nature of the game. And here I kind of did a weird step you probably wouldn't have had to do, but I just thought, you know what? I'm going to do it now. So it's done. I just took my mushrooms, drained them, and then put them in containers so they were ready to grab and go. My kids eat mushrooms like chips. It's like their favorite snack. I don't know. Ivani just loved it and got Fletcher onto it too. Yeah, maybe my kids have weird eating habits. I'm starting to wonder. Okay, so back to the eggs again. I'm sure you guys all do hard-boiled eggs similar to me, but I just thought I would show you the process here and just show you how I kind of jump from one thing to the next when I'm meal prepping. It's not just like a linear project, one thing and then the next. You kind of have to work with your baking times and your cooking times. But yeah, it shouldn't be a problem if you're dedicated to doing the meal prep and you're not like trying to hang up laundry and fold it at the same time and stuff like that. It's kind of a little bit of a song and dance, but I love it. Also, I would have got my three-year-old to peel the eggs, but she was still taking a nap, so I did it myself. It's a great job for a toddler, though. And then, you guys all have this, right? <laughs> an egg slicer? Um, I don't know. I use it all the time. I'm not a huge fan of all the crazy different kitchen gadgets, but I need my egg slicer. I use it all the time, and I just cut the eggs two different directions so they're nice and finely diced and put them in a container as well. And we will have these on top of our salads. My kids especially are in love with hard-boiled eggs, but Josh will not touch them. And there we have it all. It took me about an hour and a half to do it, not including the fruit leather the next day. It's amazing what you can get done in such a short amount of time when you are not distracted. Usually I do my meal prep in the mornings, but when I was since I was filming, I decided to do it while the kids were napping, and I do not regret it. I feel like I was super productive and got a lot done in a very short amount of time. That whole process took about an hour and a half, and that was with filming. I feel so much better about my week coming up. I have food and ingredients in the fridge ready to go. We can make those omelets, make that salad, and just pull out the Green Chef stuff for supper this week. <sighs> I feel like half the battle is won already. So I hope this video was motivational for you guys. And if you have not meal prepped, maybe dive into it a little bit in the coming week. I did want to say that since, I mean, unless you want to eat the same exact meals every single week, your meal prepping is going to look a lot different each time. So I highly recommend come up with a game plan, make a list, and then start with your things that are going to take the longest, oven things, stove top things, moving on to dicing and chopping at the end. So that will help you to make your steps count. Steps. Make your moves count. There we go. And thank you guys so much for stopping in today. Thank you for hanging out with me. And hopefully with meal prepping, you'll have more time to do the things that you love. And I've heard you guys loud and clear. You guys want more cooking videos and recipes. I know this one was not completely chock full of recipes besides the fruit leather and the honey sriracha, but I do have an awesome recipe laden video coming for you guys next Thursday. So make sure you check that one out next week. Also, if you hit that bell button beside the subscribe button, YouTube is going to let you know when that video is up and live. It's always on Thursdays. So again, thank you so much for being here. I hope that you found this helpful and motivational, and I just hope that your week goes super smooth. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.